this video we will cover the contents of the main menu, options, and how to start a world. At this point, I expect that you've already created an account, purchased the game, downloaded, and ran the game. I'll be doing these tutorials in version 1.9, which you can see at the bottom left corner of the main menu. This is the current PC version, and there are many differences between the older versions and those created for mobile and console platforms. Let's get started. Single player allows you to create a world on your computer to play on. It is possible to open this world to your local area network, LAN, to allow friends on the same network to join your world. Multiplayer allows you to connect to worlds hosted on other computers or servers. Minecraft Realms are subscription-based worlds which you can lease from Mojang, allowing you to play with friends online without hosting your own server. You can choose your language here, you can change many options here, and of course you can exit Minecraft with Quick Game. First we're going to cover many of the different options. FOV is Field of View. You can increase or decrease your peripheral vision. Realms notifications is exactly what it sounds like. If you aren't going to be using Realms, you might as well turn it off. Your skin is what your character looks like. You can apply your own skin through Minecraft.net, and this options menu allows you to change some of the layers shown. You can also switch your dominant hand in-game. Music and sounds is the sound mixer. Each piece is pretty much self-explanatory, and you can also turn on subtitles to display text that describes sounds near the player. Video settings can be adjusted to change the performance of the game, which is especially helpful if you are using low-performance computers or laptops. Graphics can be reduced to improve performance, and they just cover things like whether or not the leaves are transparent. Smooth lighting changes the gradient of light, making the light look more natural. Reducing it or turning it off will improve performance. 3D Anaglyph will change the display to support red and blue 3D goggles. GUI Scale is the size of in-game graphical user interfaces. You can toggle it like so, and we'll leave it at the auto so everything is legible. Brightness is what it sounds like. Players usually prefer higher brightness in order to see in dark places. Particles are small moving graphics that simulate things like smoke or potion effects. Reducing them can improve performance. VSync synchronizes your game's refresh rate, or frames per second, with your monitor's refresh rate to prevent tearing. VBO, or Vertex Buffer Object, allows your GPU to store your player's location data. This will improve performance if you have a good GPU, but otherwise leave it off. Render distance is the distance to the horizon, or how far away the world will load. We will show this once in the game, but rendering less of the world will improve performance. Maximum frame rate puts a limit on the allowed frame rate. If you notice an inconsistent frame rate, lowering this may help. Bobbing is the up and down motion you see when walking around, making movement feel more natural. The attack indicator is new to 1.9, and it's a cooldown bar. This option allows you to choose where the bar is located. Cloud rendering can be reduced to improve performance and will improve vision if you are at cloud level in the sky. Full screen is self-explanatory. Mipmap levels determine the distance at which textures blur. This is best left at 4. And entity shadows cast shadows from entities such as players and creatures. Turning them off will improve performance. Controls allows you to bind keys to different actions. It is best to leave these as default if you are new to keyboard gaming. This is a good place to look if you are wondering which keys do what. Language is self-explanatory. Chat settings allow you to adjust the chat box in-game. If you are playing online, you may find the text box is too intrusive or illegible, and you can adjust it here. Resource packs, formerly known as texture packs, define the in-game textures, blocks, items, and entities, as well as sounds. Custom maps may come with recommended resource packs, and you can find resource packs online if you want to change your experience. Snooper settings allow the game developer, Mojang, to collect anonymous information about your machine and game version, all of which is shown on this list. We will begin playing in single player. 
First, create a new world, which you can name whatever you like. Then choose your game mode, which we'll leave at survival for now, but you can also choose hardcore, which gives you only one life, it puts it on the hardest difficulty, and you have to try to accomplish everything without dying. Then there's creative mode, which gives you unlimited resources, flight, and it's generally used by people who want to build innovative contraptions or artwork. You can choose the seed, which generates your world if you want to. You can turn off structures, but we will cover that in a later video. You can adjust certain characteristics of the world, such as making it completely flat with customizable layers, increasing the horizontal size of biomes, increasing the vertical size of the world, and more. You can turn on cheats, which give you access to commands in chat, allowing you to change the game mode, give yourself items, change the time of day, and so forth. And you can turn on a bonus chest, which is placed near spawn with a few supplies to get you started. Then we just hit create a new world, and it'll take a second to generate the terrain. Now that the world's generated, let's take a quick look at the in-game menu. If you press escape on the keyboard, you can see you can return to game, you could check out achievements, certain statistics, the same options menu that we had before with a few changes, such as being able to change your difficulty. And if you click on video settings, we'll really quickly check the render distance differences. Now you can see I could barely see around me. There's a fog. Basically, the world ends right there. And I have to move around to make it generate more. You can open to LAN, as I mentioned before. This allows people in the same network to connect to your world and play with you, but only so long as you are playing in this world. If you are not in this world, then the world isn't generated and no one can connect to it. And of course, you can save and quit to the main menu. Join me in the next video where we will cover basic game controls, basic game mechanics, and how you can interact with the world.